know this is gonna lead to a massive snowball effect. Eventually, Unleashed will make its way to PC, so will Sonic Colors, and then all will be right in the world and will be in the best timeline. Now do Unleashed, you cowards. It's about that time of year once again. Time to see what sort of wacky and all over the place creations the fans have made for our lovable and sometimes physical slash mental pain inducing blue hedgehog Sonic. I did my first deep dive into a handful of Sonic fan games last year and the response was very positive. Thank you all so much. But one thing was made very clear. I was nowhere near close to being done. I said this before and I'll say it again, the Sonic Online community often gets a lot of flack. Sometimes rightfully deserved, but more times than not, the community with the creative side? Man, you guys are so talented. Journeying through the annual Sonic Amateur Game Expo webpage can really be an eye-opening experience, man. The people running this event do such a nice job compiling a ton of new creations for all of us to check out and download. You got ROM hacks, mods, and fan games galore, and not even for just Sonic. That cute Kirby's Halloween adventure hack I checked out before was here in its completed form, that's really cool. This fantastic Namco-inspired arcade game Annalyn was featured here, and it's now available on Steam. Congratulations to the developers on that one. Dude, Rayman Redemption is just here, a remake of the original Rayman that is so good and filled to the brim with quality of life improvements and changes that basically makes the original release obsolete. It was just there, along with so many other great creations. And funnily enough, not like I plan to upload this on a specific day or anything like that, but as this episode goes live, Sage 2021 is currently underway, so go and check out this year's entries, you're bound to find some good ones. Like look at this. Looks like Yeth finally has a sequel, baby! Pardon my fanboying here, I am just loving everything that's going on here, so I definitely recommend you take a trip to the Sage website because you are bound to find something that you are going to love. I guarantee it. Alright, now let's talk about Sonic. Let's first play some catch up with Sonic Robo Blast 2. If you recall, I had very high praise for this one, and yeah, it's still awesome. This time around, I had to finally give some more mods a shot. Only had the time to check out Modern Sonic last time. There is a whole world out there for me to explore. And uh, oh my god, Spyro? Oh dude, a and he actually plays exactly like he should. He can charge, shoot fire, glide. It's probably because I'm pretty dumb, but having no idea how modding for this game works, the fact there is a fully operational Spyro the Dragon in here is pretty amazing. I even found this custom stage designed to be a proper Spyro area rather than a Sonic one, filled with collectible gems, a new lineup of enemies, an original music track that fits in perfectly. Super cool. It looks like there was actually a stage X Expo for this game, I found this neat little hub world filled with 2020 creations, and you can just jump into any of them and see what people have come up with, as any character of your choosing. If I haven't sold you on Sonic Robo Blast 2 yet, I, I don't know what to say. It plays so well, and it is incredibly easy to add on all of this extra modded content, of which the community is very active, but fine. Okay, let's say you need some extra persuading. Huh? Oh man, we're, we're really doing this now, aren't we? All right, I will admit the UI is looking pretty sharp right now, but it's not like there's gonna be an actual battle system that's gonna be accurate to the persona. What is happening? Um, oh, okay, so it, it turns out there's a mod for Roboblast 2 that turns it into Persona 3, and it's really good too. I, I can't believe it. And yeah, sure enough, you get to explore Tartarus. Just like the Source game, you run around the randomly generated dungeon and find the stairway to climb up higher and higher. That's it, that's all of Persona 3, more or less. In this demo, you even get to choose who's in your party. I went with Blaze, Shadow, and Metal Sonic for my ride, but you can go with whoever you want. And considering you can actually decide your party member's actions in battle, it's kinda better than the original PS2 game. God, that's, that's really weird to say. So far in this demo, it is just the dungeon crawling part, no social links in sight, as hilarious as that would be, but damn man, this is just crazy. Oh, and the Reaper is here too, good. You see, if you take too long on a floor, it shows up out of nowhere, decides to chase you, the screen goes dark, it's terrifying, this is too accurate, too accurate. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Metroid Prime 4. Yeah, because you know, there's no rules anymore. We get a fully functional Samus Aran to play as too. And you know what? Fine, if this third person camera style ain't your thing, here, boom. First person mode like you'd prefer. I, I, I just gotta stop being floored by these things at this point, man. Yeah, this works exactly like you would expect it to. And when you activate the mod, it also includes rain in the first zone and the music is now all Metroid stuff. What was once Sonic now feels straight out of the first Metroid Prime. And hey, if you want to play as Samus in those custom stages too, go ahead. Why not? I do not know how you modders do what you do, but keep on doing it. I am a big fan. Also found a mod where you can play as Kirby. Yeah, you can float, gain copy abilities. Do not be surprised anymore. I am succumbing to my own gimmick here. I love this too. Easily the most overwhelming comment I got was, hey stupid, you forgot about the racing game, Sonic Robo Blast 2 Kart. Here's the kicker, I didn't forget, but I needed a reason to do a follow-up episode, so here we are. I mean easily, in my opinion, this is the best Roboblast 2 creation to come out of the entire community. Roboblast 2 Kart does exactly what you think it does. It goes above and beyond to transform this from a platformer to a fully fledged car racer with, yes, the same level of modding capabilities as the base game. You turn on a simple character mod and we suddenly get dozens of Sonic and even other Sega racers, all with a very, very wide customizable color palette. Also found this other mod where you can play as a cardboard cutout of Eggman and also a big Eevee, so yeah. Easily my main. I found a Game Boy themed green green stage too. Once again, I'm very easy to please here. I'm living out my gimmick. It's just so cool, man. It looks and sounds like the original Robo Blast 2, but it plays like a really solid kart racer. This isn't even really a mod. This is a full blown standalone experience. Unless you use the Kartless mod to then run around the courses Sonic R style, because again, why not? There are no rules anymore, but otherwise, yeah, and because this is just as easy to work with as that base game, it is really simple to hop online and play with your friends too, which is awesome. Sadly, when I logged in, I didn't have any luck in the public lobbies, but the fact this is an option in the first place is fantastic all around. All of the props in the world to everyone involved with these games and the associated mods, one of the best fan games to grace basically any franchise ever. Sonic Robo Blast is truly the king. Well, let's clarify here, Roboblast 2. We gotta specify Roboblast 2 because you remember the first Roboblast? Yeah, of course you don't. Well, not long after that first fan game episode went out, someone decided to release a remake of that first Roboblast. It looks and plays just like Sonic Mania, but it's still its own thing, man. Fantastic animations too, the way Sonic pops out of his ball all happy and whatnot, ah, oh, that's adorable. Slightly more expression than whatever Sonic was doing in that original game. It's only about a five minute long ride, it's a two act romp through not whole coast zone, but considering what it's attempting to be, it's actually a pretty neat part of Sonic fan game history. But with all that being said, that concludes the Roboblast portion of today's adventures, but only the start of the side scrolling portion. 2D Sonic fan games continue to be one of the most rampant contributions to the fan game community. And I had to say here, looking at the comments, there was one that definitely caught my eye. The creator of Sonic Advance Revamp said, hey, you should check out Sonic vs. Darkness. Well, all right, I guess I know where I'm gonna start off. Thank you so much for the recommendation. And also, Advance Revamped, the game is sick, dude. Good job on that. Awesome stuff. Let's get going. Sonic vs. Darkness True Nightmare Revived Right off the bat, it is clear that we're actually dealing with some relatively uncharted territory in the fan game field. Of all the existing games to be inspired from, this one is actually more like Sonic Rush than anything else. I'm not used to this, man. This is really cool, playing something so similar to Rush with beautiful sprite work and in widescreen. There's even this little rest area that you can revisit with a yet-to-be-stocked item shop, I am assuming that will be fun to experiment with once there's actually some stuff in there to buy. At the moment, there's not too much to this demo. There's only one level you get to play through as Sonic or Shadow, but I'm pretty sure this is still being worked on, so I'm definitely looking forward to what else comes down the pipeline for this one. One thing remains very true, not necessarily a good or bad thing, but still very true. A lot of the Sonic games out there are just not completed projects, but if there's one thing that this whole community is really capable of, is making a ton of really awesome proof of concepts and demos. There's a lot of those. 
Like here, we have Sonic Game Land, also evoking some strong Rush vibes, as well as Sonic Advance. On a surface level, we got another really solid and very fast Sonic side-scroller here, and while that's always a good thing, it turns out the main inspiration is actually Sonic Rivals and Riders. What? Oh, uh, okay, that's why. There's a battle mode in this one. Yeah, man, this is where all the potential lies. You got a full-on racing mode and even a PvP combat mode. And I can see this being a ton of fun when there's more to dive into. But for the levels that are already here, yeah, it works pretty good. Running through the single player level is enjoyable too, but man, being able to actually think about Sonic Rivals in a pretty positive light is pretty uncommon, let's be honest here, so it's nice to see someone out there giving that a shot. There is not enough out there to fill the niche of Sonic racing on foot games, but get ready, there's a few more later on in this video that are gonna cover that too. Next up, we got Sonic Freedom. Dude, so you know that sick Sonic CD opening, a video so good it essentially defined how the audience would look at this character for years to come? And then the OVA happened and like it was kinda like that but not, but at least it was still animated so that was kinda cool? Well, hey, looks like we got a side-scrolling, hand-drawn Sonic game in the works that very similarly looks like that Sonic CD opening. This demo is currently only a singular level, and according to the developer, this isn't really indicative of how any future work will be, but for what's here, this is really cool, man. The level structure is pretty different than what you would come to expect, encouraging active vertical platforming thanks to this new bullet dash move. And boy, is it beautiful. Chunky pixels are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but quality hand-drawn graphics? Oh, this is just as awesome. Big fan of this. Quantum Collision is gonna be another one to keep your eyes on for sure. Look, Knuckles is wearing his hat. 10 out of 10. Once I start accepting that people are just really good at recreating classic Sonic gameplay with their own little twists and tweaks, of which this game has and it's great, I gotta see something else to really make a fan game pop. Well, for this one, we got a neat looking top-down hub world, something you never really see in a fan game like this. We got a really fun special stage where you race and collect blue spheres at the same time to get the emeralds, that's really cool. The sprite work and music are really well done, but we even get this nifty little level transition cutscene, just giving a little bit of extra context to the world you're playing in. It's all of those extra little things that push a game from being good to great. So, if this level of quality continues, Quantum Collision is another one that has what it takes to be a top-tier fan game for sure. And once again, hat. Not enough people are giving Knuckles the hat. But of all the games I played, if any side-scrolling fan game stole the show, easily, it was Sonic Galactic. I don't know how this game sort of just came out of nowhere and gave us something basically mania quality with its fantastic art design and music, a playable Fang the Sniper, using his gun as a means to platform, which is fantastic, as well as a brand new character, Tunnel the Mole, who's able to shoot across the screen like a regular Rocket Knight, making him fit right in with the rest of the crew, but damn, this dev team is killing it. Apparently Galactic has been in development for at least three years now, and it definitely shows this is fantastic. You gotta remember, Mania's level designs were built for three characters in mind, and it obviously did a really good job of that, but Galactic managed to have a level here where five characters are fun to play as. Impressive would be the understatement to end all understatements. Even the menu is super smooth. I don't know how long it's gonna take for a full game to come out of this, but take as much time as you need. This one is gonna be one for the record books, I can already tell. And you know, speaking of Sonic Mania, it, it really makes you think. It's crazy to imagine a timeline out there in the Sonic community where Retro Sonic never happened. Little history lesson for you whippersnappers out there, Retro Sonic is a fan game submitted to the Sonic Amateur Game Expo all the way back in 2007. This has been going on for a while now. It's pretty good, you know, a simple 2X zone, it plays pretty well, looks surprisingly good for 2007, I will give it that, but the kicker, this was made by Taxman, aka Christian Whitehead, the guy who would go on to do the classic Sonic remakes on mobile and would work on, of course, Sonic Mania. Much like that Roboblast 1 remake from earlier, there are some really pivotal fan games in this franchise's history, so under that umbrella, while it may not be as impressive as the other ones nowadays, I would definitely recommend this one as well, just to see how far things have come. 
But before we move on to the third dimension, I want to talk about some remakes here, because last year I played remakes of the Master System versions of Sonic 1 and 2, and I loved those. But since then, and this is really cool, they've been updated regularly. On top of implementing bug fixes, there have been changes as minimal as modified graphics and some physics tweaks including things like the drop dash, all the way to including entirely new zones like Marble and Spring Yard for Sonic 1, to additional challenges for Sonic 2, like online racing. What? Now one could say riding a board as mighty through oil ocean is sacrilege to the original game's vision, but to that I say, hey, I finally got around to beating Master System Sonic 2 for the first time. Give me my congratulations, this counts. As it turns out, these remakes were done with the Open Sonic SMS engine, publicly downloadable and usable with Game Maker Studio. So, if you have your own ideas, a lot of time on your hands, and you want to do something really cool like, oh, I don't know, remake Sonic Pocket Adventure in the same vein as the games I just talked about? Go for it! This is just really cool. The creator of the two Master System remakes is encouraging others to contribute to the community, and that gets me really excited for the future. We are one step closer to having a competent version of Sonic Blast. God, I can't believe Sega thought this was okay. Actually, speaking of Sonic Blast, I even found a remake of Sonic Bootlegs. Here we have Sonic Blasting Adventure, a remake of 3D Blast 5, Adventure 7, and Adventure 8. All, dare I say, hidden gems from the Game Boy. Why do Sonic fans continue to ask for Adventure 3? We're all the way up to Adventure 7 and 8. You guys are so greedy. If I were to tell you that 3D Blast 5 was garbage, would you believe me? Well, thankfully, for you Sonic historians out there, this 20 minute or so adventure is the definitive way to experience these classics. There's something quote unquote magical about wanting to remake something as niche as this, but you know what? I can respect it. This was decent fun. I'm assuming Sonic Jam from the Gamecom and Sonic X on the Leapster are next on the docket. Don't, don't let me down, the community is going crazy for it. So, at this point you may be thinking these 2D Sonic fan games are all the community is capable of, and then once again, while there are a ton of those, there's a lot more than that. While the classic styled adventures are really cool, there are also plenty of adventures that go far beyond what you think is capable with this franchise. Us Sonic fans tend to complain about a lot of things, but if there's one common complaint with modern Sonic out there that most of us can agree on, it is the absolute disrespect to the Chow. So many people have been wanting to raise Chow in new games for so long, and honestly, I still don't know how we don't have a Chow raising mobile app yet, but that's neither here nor there. Chow Resort Island, no more playing around here, this is the Chow Simulator for you. Pick your favorite character, get dropped onto a new island, hatch a couple of eggs, Go nuts, dude! Say hello to my new Chow friends. We got Blumbo and Blumpus. They are best friends. It's interesting, the Chow Garden here is definitely cool, but when you get rid of the part where you have to play an actual Sonic game to get the rings and items you need to better your Chow, and instead you just grind out a bunch of races, there's definitely a lack of substance here, if I'm being honest. What is here is still pretty cool, fairly ambitious. It's not bad. Dare I say, it's actually slightly addictive. I just kind of want more. I want Blumbo and Blumpus to be the very best they could possibly be. Definitely worth checking out, but there is still a chow-sized hole in my heart just waiting to be filled. Remember when I mentioned how Sonic CD defined the character for a large population of people? Well, the same can be said for the old 90s cartoon, Sonic Sat AM. It was the same hedgehog you knew and loved, but in a darker and grittier atmosphere, with a new cast of friends in a world that pulled off the whole being taken over by the bad guy thing way better than Forces ever got close to, and the Robotnik in this one was ugly as sin. It made it work, and thank goodness it looks like someone's out there taking notice of the potential of that story, and is crafting an old school RPG around it. This may just be an RPG maker creation, you can kind of tell when it's in that engine, but that's fine, don't let that dampen your expectations. This is extremely well done. Characters have unique skills they can pull off in the hub world, including Sonic going up over and gone he's so fast. The combat is nice and traditional, very refreshing after remembering Chronicles exists, and hey, Antoine is here. Good for him. It's hard to say just how ambitious this project will be, but like everything else, the potential is here for something really, really cool. Some of you may know there was actually a cancelled Genesis game that was based around this cartoon and this atmosphere, so seeing someone finally take hold of what could be and making something really cool out of it, that's very exciting. But then there is one very important question that I think many of us want answered. 
What if we just want to beat the crap out of Sonic and friends? Sonic Smackdown! Why wouldn't there be a fully built from the ground up fighting game featuring Sonic characters, man? Sonic Battle is for chumps! So I am like the exact opposite of a fighting game pro here. I am a novice to end all novices here. Pretty, pretty bad. So with that in mind, this is actually a whole lot of fun. You get to fight Knuckles in Pumpkin Hill with that stage's music playing in the background. This game just gets it, you know? It is crazy to have a 1v1 fight between Gemeral and Mecha Sonic and actually have it feel like both characters are properly represented. That is so cool. Gemeral is extra cool too, actually. Every character has unique specials you can pull off with certain button combinations, of course. But much like you would expect from Gemeral, or more specifically Emeril, one of his abilities is being able to pull off other characters' moves and call them your own. That is a really good callback to Sonic Battle, and it makes a whole lot of sense here. Silver the Hedgehog is also here, and his stage plays Dreams of an Absolution. Gotta give respect where it's due, man, that song is sweet. I spent all of my time playing this game going through the arcade mode, therefore, I think I'm a general main now. But like any other fighting game out there, you hook up some fight sticks, you get a buddy along for the ride, and yeah, eat it, Sonic the Fighters. Do you have a Sonic spinball stage in your game? Yeah, didn't think so. Look at this abomination you can turn Big the Cat into. Your nightmares just got scarier. Now, last year I shined a light on a few 3D engines that show a lot of promise, which tend to be where most of the engines stay, rather than getting full games out of them. Which is fine, these were so much fun. And, yep, I found a few more. Sonic Infinity Engine manages to make a really fast modern Sonic that's actually really easy to maneuver with strict precision, and even gives some other characters unique abilities as well, on top of having gorgeous lighting. I could be wrong, but I haven't found any actual levels that use this engine yet, but boy when they do, I want to play those immediately. Then we have Sonic Arcus out here basically remaking Sonic Unleashed for the PC. That's wild! And sure, you can say, oh, but there's already Sonic Generations that can kind of replicate some of the Unleashed experience. No! This engine is doing a damn good job attempting to recreate the entire experience! Running around the Apatos hub world on PC and not in emulation is pretty surreal. This is the same as Project 06. If Sega themselves do not see the potential and the easy money they could get from getting these games out there on PC, well then just leave it to the fans to do all the heavy lifting. They will clearly be very happy to do so and make it better. I am very excited to see where this goes, especially if custom levels are possible as well. You thought the Unleashed project for Generations was cool? Just wait, eventually we're going to be getting the Generations project for Unleashed. Aw, uh, then we'll be seeing the good stuff. Sonic Battle R, this one... This one was a trip. Take the customized Sonic of your dreams, run around the Sonic Adventure 1 hub world, all of it. You can even jump into this boat and then go all the way to Eggman's ship if you want to. That's kind of cool. And dive into one of the dozens of stages to go out on a race. Yeah, this was intended for multiplayer, but I couldn't get anyone to play with me, just... Just, just take my word on it, okay? Basically, it seems like if it's possible to pluck the level files out of an existing Sonic game, it was thrown into this one for you to just have a free-for-all on. Throw all the rules out the window, man. You think this is only good for racing mechanics? No, they are good, but no. Hop into Westopolis, gun equipped, let the bullets fly. Oh man, Royal Raceway is here too? Okay, so we're not sticking to just Sonic here. That leaves the floodgates wide open. This... This is extremely cursed. This is what I live for. Honestly, even though this is intended for multiplayer, I had a ton of fun in the single player. Going through all of these different stages with my new Sonic OC... Sonic with three S's? I loved it. Now, confession time. In all of my time researching for these Sonic fan game videos, I did make one very grave mistake last year. I said that there were so many cool 3D Sonic engines out there, but it would have been cooler if there was a completed project to really sink my teeth into. Turns out that exists. Sonic GT. Boy, do I ever feel foolish for passing by this one last time. You see, I went through the tutorial level and I thought it was kind of neat, but I didn't think there was going to be much more than that. It plays super well and the sense of flow here is fantastic, but surely I'm going to get past this, then get rewarded with a thanks for playing screen and then the game boots off, right? Well, no. Oh my god, there's a story? That actually organically includes Mighty and Ray into things? Oh wow, there's multiple stages too? Huge ones at that. These guys made stages with unique themes that are massive and managed to walk the fine line between pure fun sandbox and actual progression-based speedrunning and platforming. And we even get decent boss fights that genuinely put your skills to the test. This 
is awesome. How did I miss this last year? The themes here are all from existing Sonic games, so something new would be pretty cool, but with how solid these stages are, that is really a nothing complaint. It's not a super long game, but honestly, that is arguably the best way to do a quality Sonic game. Short, but highly replayable. High marks all around for Sonic GT. In my opinion, the definitive Sonic 3D fan game. And as it turns out, the developers are making their own original game now too, with Project Rascal. Ooh, I love when stuff like this happens. Good luck to you guys. You know, sometimes it's hard to really know if these videos are going to be interesting or not because, once again, like I've said before, when you think of the Sonic fan community, personally, I was always predisposed to thinking that it was going to be just total cringe. Cringe as far as the eye could see. No. Dare I say, the Sonic fan community is truly what keeps this franchise alive. Sega could keep screwing things up until the sun blows out, but as long as we're able to get these really awesome fan-made experiences, Dude, the hedgehog's gonna be just fine. But, but I did find some dumb stuff too. Sorry, but when you find a game out there called Eggman Hates Furries, I, I just had to, man. I, I just had to. I don't know what I expected, but it certainly wasn't this. You ever just like, Imagine what a Sonic game would be like under the influence of something potentially illegal. Yeah, this is... Th this'll do it. Essentially, this is like one crazy non-stop action movie with an endless barrage of bosses and totally absurd art direction. It's not even that bad, but it's like, why? Why is this called Eggman Hates Furries? I mean, I get it, you know, he's dedicated his entire life to taking down a hedgehog and fox, he enslaves tiny animals and puts them into robots, like, I get it, you know? But I need more context for this, damn it! As much as I wanted this to be flat out bad, it's actually kind of alright. It's incredibly stupid, don't get me wrong, and very much broken, and maybe to me it's just refreshing to play a fan game that really reminds me of like the old Newground days, but this is the perfect level of stupid for me in all honesty. I played Sonic Dreams Collection last year, that just barely passed my stupidity threshold, so this is more my speed. Play this for yourself and crack the case of why Eggman just hates those furries. Maybe the ending will surprise you. Probably not. This is only a few years old, too. If we want to go down the Newgrounds rabbit hole a bit deeper, we gotta find something more of that era. Oh boy, here we go. A fan game from the year 2000. This released before Shadow the Hedgehog existed. I hope this puts things into perspective a bit stronger than just saying 20 plus years ago. I can't help but admit the morbid curiosity of playing a fan game this vintage and dusty. It was just calling out to me to check out. Our adventure begins in Minimalist Madness Zone. Move over, Sonic Mania. So I don't exactly remember what the expectations for fan games of this time were, but I'll give the game this. It works. All right, I found Tails. Now to see why he's so bored. Why are you yawning? I'm bored. What? It's obvious, look at the damn title. I mean, okay, fair point. I talked to Matt about better cutscenes. You get him to make the game any easier? Wh what? What is happening? Oh, no, okay, that sucks. Tails turned off the lights. The game is having you play a Sonic level where you can't see what you're doing years before it was cool. Oh, hey, a special stage. Didn't see that one coming, I'll be honest. Gotta get 30 blue spheres in title card zone, my favorite. Does this mean Super Sonic is in this game, actually? That would be hilarious. After a while, Tails just starts making weird noises. Then I got trapped in the floor, and that was the end of my game. So I guess I'll never truly get to know why Tails was bored. Shame, really. I was very excited to see what... Kakashita no Kyoden Zone 2 had to offer. With a name like that, you should only expect the best. But damn it, we have to go back even further. So, I don't know if this is the earliest example, but I did happen to find a fan game that is theorized to have been released as far back as 1999, the same year Sonic Adventure released. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the search for Knuckles. Long and prosper. Okay, will do. It might be best if you stayed here, Mighty. To boldly go where no hog has been before. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm glad we're sticking to the whole Sonic not knowing how to swim cannon. Oh. Eventually, we find ourselves at Angel Island. Maybe Knuckles is here. That would make sense. Oh, this, this is it? Then a dog tells us Knuckles is trapped in a well? 
Oh, oh no, it, it was actually a trap. It, it was metal knuckles the whole time. What a shiny metallic mouth you've got. So I can chew my grapes, Sonic. Why is that funny? That's not funny. Then you get a phone call from Fo Forrest Gump? Is it, wh what, what? Oh, and, and then the Death Egg crashed onto the island and oh, Knuckles is here? We, we found him? The island then breaks, the heroes all make their escape and then they die. That's it. I take it all back. This is the best fan game. It was all downhill from here. Yep. Still better than Sonic Forces.